Welcome back, blade fans and fans of automatic knives. We have an automatic knife in the house today to present to you. This is something that, uh, near as I can tell, came out in 2021 from Benchmade. Uh, for you fans of USA made knives, Benchmade is made in the USA, and this is no exception. And this is a fast firing out the side auto. You may or may not be able to carry autos uh, outside your house in your jurisdiction. Um, I know I cannot. They're still verboten. Maybe we can get uh, knife rights to change that uh, in some of the states where they are still not allowed except by police and military, which is the exception. So, this is a button firing out the side, very lightweight, large-ish folder. That was a long, detailed description, right? It has grivery scales, and it has a inner frame of steel, as far as I know. And we'll take a closer look with the flashlight in a moment. Uh, this is the non-serrated version. It does come in a serrated version. It also comes in a black handle. Very strong spring. If you're not hanging on to it, it will jump out of your hand. Not that it's that hard to hold on to a knife, but you know, you hand it to somebody who doesn't know what it is, you probably shouldn't do that. And uh, probably safer that way. So a very useful EDC, I would say, uh, military law enforcement use, out the side auto, with a nice useful blade of CPM D2. Now what is CPM D2? Well, it's Crucible Powder Metallurgy, is what the CPM stands for, I understand. And it's not your granddaddy's D2, so to speak. Uh, this is a finer grained, denser, if that's the right word, D2. So being D2, it will still uh, be on the rustable side, kind of a semi-stainless steel. They put a uh, coating on this. Uh, I would need to look it up and I apologize for exactly what the coating is, but it is a pebbled sort of um, denser coating, uh, kind of similar to what you might see on Topps knives. Um, if I can find out what it is uh, by the time I post this, I will put it in the description. Here is the U.S. manufactured logo. That's interesting. Or stamp. It is a textured handle with a deep carry clip and it's one of the good clips that isn't painted black but is uh, I believe let's see I don't believe it's stainless. I think that what they might do is um, blue it. But it is a bona fide deep carry clip goes on either side, left or right. Ergos are nice, and uh, we're going to do some measurements on it. And then we'll do a compare with some other out-the-side autos. Overall length of this uh, baby is uh, coming up on 8 and 3 quarters, just shy of that. And we've got a blade length of... Uh, I'm going to call that uh, 3.6. Got a cutting edge of 3.5. As far as handle thickness goes, it's pretty slim. 0.55. And I wouldn't want to go much slimmer than that. The blade stock is 3, I'm going to call that 3 millimeters on the nose. So it's a rather slim blade, but it has a high flat grind that makes it pretty slicey.
Oh yeah. And those are my notes. <laughs> um, pretty slicey blade. The notes are there so I don't forget the names of the other knives, which I can often do. Um, let's get a weight on it. So we can condense all that into one spot on this video. And as usual, I'm not going to zero out until I tell it to. I think that's it. So we got a 3.89, call it a 3.9 ounce knife. That is darned light for an almost 9 inch blade knife. Wow. And as I say, it fires like a demon locks up in both the open position and the closed position. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy or discussion, shall we say, about um, safeties on knives, whether or not they're needed. This button is fairly well recessed. It's about even with the top of the handle, which is a good thing. That prevents automatic or uh, accidental, sorry deployment so if my thumb press is there and not there it won't fire that's a good thing um, when would you lock it up I would say and this is something I mentioned in, as a comment on somebody else's video when would you use the lock and not use the lock I would say use the lock all the time or don't use it at all because your motor memory has to be the same all the time if you want to open this under duress and use it for whatever so uh, I would say if you're in the military and you're carrying this on a vest or elsewhere where that button could get impacted uh, you may want to lock it up you're jumping out of an airplane and uh, parachuting um, you may want to lock it up so you can still then rapidly open it up if you remember what to do. So again, that's locked, that's unlocked with the red button. And boy, that just, I keep saying, it just fires with authority. You can see how slim that handle is. We have uh, probably a grivery gray spacer there. We've got uh, T8 on one side. I believe it is a T8. I wonder if it's larger than that. It's looking a little bigger than a T8. Could be a T10. And we've got a um, got Morse code here, which is interesting, and that caught me by surprise just now. Uh, you may know what the Morse code means. Two dots, a dash, a dot, a dash, and a dot. Okay, well... It is called the Claymore. Claymore is a um, destructive mine type device which was used, uh, made popular, shall we say, or infamous in Vietnam where when it goes off it shoots a whole bunch of balls or projectiles out in a shotgun pattern and pretty much wipes out everything that's in front of it and they stand them up horizontally so that uh, they get a wide pattern spray. Nasty stuff. There's your lanyard hole. And let's do a compare since we're kind of far along into this uh, video. Let's do a compare with uh, some of the knives I have notes on here. This is the Fox Predator. Doesn't fire nearly as strongly. A lot of people don't know that Fox does create some automatic knives and that's not quite as large as the Claymore. Then we have another Benchmade out the side auto. This is the Casbah. This is a smaller one. I'm going to put that uh, Predator aside. This is a smaller knife uh, certainly by about an inch then the Claymore. Let's come in a little closer. Also fires very snappy. 
but I can tell when I close it that the spring's not nearly as strong, but it still is a fast firing knife. Has the same setup here, but without the red dot. You can lock it closed, fire it, you can lock it open. With a spring on the knife, locking it open may not be something necessary, but it's there in case you want it. As I, that, just lock that button on the Predator in the open position. And finally, can't have a comparison without having a Microtech knife in the mix. And This one you are not going to accidentally deploy, I would guess, because that is a deep plunge lock. You really got to give that a push. Um, this is the SOCOM Elite in the Tonto version with the blackened blade. And uh, with this one, it is a M390, I believe. Let's see. Well, yeah, there it is. M390, so uh, premium steel, super steel, etc. This one has the uh, grippy, rubbery type material inset below the surface of the aluminum handle. Whole different construction. We got the clip on the, the pivot side, which a lot of people don't like. The SOCOM Bravo, uh, newly out and made by Reich, does remedy that where they put the clip on the pommel side. And there's your glass breaker, which uh, none of these other knives have. So for size comparison, we've got a full 4-inch blade on the SOCOM Elite. And we've got about at least a half inch longer overall. Nice work on this knife. I'm not a huge fan of aluminum handles, although many uh, autos do come with aluminum handles, particularly most, if not all, of the Microtech knives. I think there's a few exceptions. But um, a lot of people say, well, could they have gone with G10 on this? I suppose they could have. Then they would need to machine that G10 to shape, and it would probably drive the cost of the knife up. This is a little over 200 as it stands. Let's see, 230, I think, on this one. Um, White Mountain Knives does have an automatic division, and if you're, they can ship to your state, uh, you can get them there, and I believe you can use my discount code, Old Sword for 10% off. So there you go. Nice, powerful spring out the side auto. That's got to be every bit as fast and strong as a Protec, I would guess. And I've got a, at least one Protec to compare it to, but not on the table today. So let me know what you think. You might be interested, you might not. You may skip over this because it's an auto, but you know, collectible wise, I can use this around the house in the yard and uh, not be subject to uh, the legal restrictions of my area. So don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe. I'll be back with you soon.